Um, this is our pressure washer. This is number 18. If we ever have an issue, we want to be able to see that. Just take one step back that way. Yep. Um, so pressure washer, you have your engine, you have your pump. This is this housing back here is your belts. This is your unloader. Okay, most likely, I mean, you're going to get in here, you're going to start to turn that on. You just pull your choke. If it's cold, if it's hot, you're going to be able to pretty much just turn it. Mm -hmm. You're not really going to mess with this throttle on here. That's going to get RPMs up and down. Um, once it's running, we could go down low if we wanted to really reduce our water pressure, but in general, we do that with tips. Um, if you run into an issue with it, the more things that you notice when you had that issue, the better. If it made a loud mm -hmm. bang, if it stalled out, if it's grinding, just like you would try to explain to a mechanic, hey, my car is making this weird noise. It, you may not do the best job of explaining it, but at least they'll understand or have some idea. Pressure washers get hooked up to right here on this one. This one has a hose over here. It's just a jumper hose. There's nothing special about this. I can plug in directly back there, but it's easier and I don't put my face by the muffler on either one of these. <coughs> muffler will melt plastic. It'll burn through your clothes. That wouldn't breathe it all in. But if I got to get in here and turn this on, I can do that. Um, keep going this way. Um, this red hose, so unlike a regular homeowner pressure washer, will run out of gas before we'll run into an issue with the pressure washer. Mm -hmm. Anytime that you're not spraying water, water is bypassing back into the tank, that's really why we have that tank, because that tank gives us more flow than what you would get from um, somebody's hose. And this also enables us to run two eight gallon a minute pressure washers and a five gallon a minute um, 12 volt pump. We have our hose reels for our pressure washers. Um, they're, not, they're not connected to anything else. This is literally just used for storage. So you just pull off the hose that you need for the job. Today we'll be using probably two or 300 feet each time. Usually 200 is what you want to pull. Okay. 300 is just excess hose. And usually you can go around a house to the left and then go around to the right and you're good. Yeah. Um, on them, we have a ball valve that's used to shut the water off. It also has this swivel on here, which enables it to be able to swivel instead of the hose wanting to pull you all the time. Um, take them off with the quick connect. I can also just use this and be able to, and that's actually moving a little. Yeah, let's we'll see. It may need to be tightened. Um, but just like you can take a hose and put your thumb on the end of it and shoot it. Not that you're not gonna put your thumb no, on the end of uh -huh. this, but you can close it down and that's gonna change how much, how far the water's gonna go. You'll hook your gun onto this, hook your wand, and then your J-Rock, which I'll explain that later. <clears throat> um, realize these trucks are bright, bold, and colorful, and so you're driving down the road, people are gonna pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. We want it to look good. Um, this is just your black rubber garden hose. Um, if we run out of water, we're kind of dead in the water. So we want to run two water spigots most times. It's commercial. This this particular project we're working on has got so much water that it shouldn't be a matter of an issue. Um, we do have splitters, so like on a commercial one where you've got enough water that's going out, it'll actually put out more water than will go through just one hose. Your hoses on your house aren't limited either, so you can pull out of one hose and get, say, seven gallons a minute, you can pull the other one and get five, and this one just goes down to six. It doesn't mm -hmm. split the water flow, so getting multiple waters, because at the end of the day, you want to be washing the whole time. So water is our first thing we do on a job site. Uh, we have water filter there, and then we also have our second line. So you get on the job site, again, pull this out, hook it to the first water spigot you find, disconnect it, hook it up to that, and then hook the other one to it. Uh, that way you got water going through both of them. Keep in mind if this gets a lot of dirt and debris in it, you want to clean that out. Mm -hmm. Simple things like we don't, we connect directly to the spigot. I don't know how long Miss Jones has been since she used her hose last. I've turned them on and they've had all kinds of bugs and stuff and then all it takes is one bumblebee's butt and then that'll clog your filter and then you're sitting there, why don't we have any water? Mm -hmm. uh, if you ever run out of water, we want to check all of our filters at that point because probably something went wrong um, and make sure that there's no kinks in it. This yellow line is your soap line. This is what we're spraying bleach or chemical out of. Um, 
it's powered by this 12 volt pump. Cool. It's just a little electric pump. It's not crazy powerful. Mm -hmm. It's windy. We're going to struggle with it. But if you use that, use a wand. Sometimes we'll be on an A-frame ladder to be able to spray up higher on stuff. We can use that. <clears throat> um, we keep our wands right here. Okay. So this is our small wand, our medium wand, and our large wand is right back here. Um, this big tank is our bleach tank. 1791 is just the SDS or MSDS code uh -huh. for bleach. Um, at least for right now, the biggest thing, if we got pulled over, that's bleach. We've got a sheet or book inside there. Morning, Monty. Um, right here is Apple Wash. That's our house wash soap. That's okay. what we use in all of our houses, roof washes. Um, it smells like apples. Um, it's basically Dawn dish soap, but essentially it's on steroids. Yeah. Um, it gives a red color to it, but then that's going to disappear because we're using bleach. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a sense of smell, but okay. supposedly it makes it smell better. Um, but it helps it cling on the surface so you can use a weaker solution to get the same ultimate result in it. Um, we bump it up based off of what we're cleaning. If we're cleaning a house, we're going to be at like a 1% or 2% on our soap mix. And then if we're doing a roof, we'll be at 3 4 5%. If you put it crazy high on a soap, you're going to spend more of your time rinsing off bubbles than you are actually cleaning the surface. But it, it's... The idea is that, again, it helps the bleach cling on there so it works longer and then also breaks the bond so it gets a fuller rinse off of it. Um, and then we have this thing in here. This thing is called a proportioner. It enables us to be able to take our mix and go from house wash to roof wash, to deck, whatever it needs to be. If it's, you know, this house is just horribly filthy dirty, we may use a stronger mix. If this roof is really, really dirty, but if it's not that dirty, we don't need to use as much bleach. Mm -hmm. um, so we literally open up our water. We'll go through more on how to actually do it, but we'd set our bleach, you know, so we want 2%. Uh, what we're doing for UMES for this project is 2%. It's all commercial. It's some heavy duty staining on some concrete block. Um, but we want to be careful about that. The the biggest thing with a pressure washing company is, oh, they killed all my plants. And we got to avoid that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd much rather somebody call us and say we missed some spots and we go back and fix that versus we kill their plants if the bad reputation hurts us, makes us look sloppy. Um, there's basically splash and dash is what people are called for taking a bunch of bleach, spray it all over, or spray and pray too. Yeah. Uh, spray as much bleach as you can and then pray that it doesn't mm -hmm. kill anything. Um, and our soap. We change our soap here. Okay. The bleach is an actual percentage of your mixture. The soap is just kind of a ratio of what we're putting in there. So right. it doesn't, that's not really, it's not gonna be 2% bleach, 2% soap, you know, 96% water. No, it's 2% bleach solution. Like what we get is uh, basically 12 and a half percent. So we're cutting that down basically to between 10%, 15% mixture of bleach to water, a ratio. Um, we want to make sure this gets flushed out at the end of the day so we can okay. close off our soap, close off our bleach, and we'll run water through this line or through the priming line, which is right here. <coughs> um, this is what we'll do to basically get all the air bubbles out of that system. Mm -hmm. It basically works like you're trying to drink it th three drinks with three straws. Okay. Okay, so imagine trying to get that going. There's a little bit of a process to it, but once you get it going, you're good. And obviously, if you're not drinking well out of one of the straws, that's going to cause you to have issues with all three. Um, so we run it to water, run that through. Uh, we don't want it to be pressured because I turned on the pump there for a second. You can see that's it's a little bit slick, but um, <coughs> at least from the pump through this line should be flushed out after every job. We can leave bleach inside here, but if it's over the weekend, Friday night, or Friday afternoon, rinse it out. If you know you got roof mix in there, we try to not have roof mix sitting in there because that's a three or 4% solution. Um, if it's the end of the day, or you know you're not gonna be needing any more bleach for the rest of the day, try and switch it over to water earlier so you can just have water in there and not be wasting it. But this valve right here just locks off what's inside the there. <clears throat> um, 
That's your pressure washer guns. Right. They're all quick connected up here. Three carabiners, three guns. You've got your five gallon buckets here. Um, underneath is this thing called an X-Jet. It's a way to pull soap or bleach straight through there. Comes out this end. You can adjust your spray pattern. So if it's open like that, it's basically it's going to shoot a straight stream, but then when you close that down, it's going to make it into the um, And then here we've got just a little valve. You turn it off. So if you have to set this thing, <coughs> if you have to set this down on the ground, if that's open, it will siphon every bit of bleach out all onto the grass and kill whatever's right below. So you'd close that valve. You can also close that valve some to just change it so it's not pulling a hot, hot mix. Like this will pull basically about a three, about a one third mix. So if you're at 12%, it's gonna basically be spraying 3% bleach out onto the surface. Gotcha. So usually we'll, we'll edit that by putting more water into our bleach mixture. So if we have 50-50 mix in there, that's already taking your 12 and a half down to six. So if it pulled one third, you're at like a 2% mix, which isn't not still strong, but it's not gonna cause pretty much immediate issues. Um, and then we just flush this thing out with water, just literally spray water into it. <coughs> um, we keep that in the bottom of this so that <coughs> if you leave it in the actual bucket, you're gonna have chemical in the bucket, it's gonna sit in there, it's gonna rust mm -hmm. it, and it's gonna waste it. Um, so here we typically have a couple of rags, get the rag wet. Use that while you're reeling these up. These reels are basically about a thousand dollars a piece, Good. but they make your life a lot easier. Um, this thing's called a turbo nozzle. You're typically not going to use that that often. It's a rotary high powered red tip. It's actually from your pressure washer. It'll spin. We can shoot paint up, shoot concrete up. You can jack stuff up pretty bad. Um, does not get used that often. Keep our lawn signs here. <coughs> um, lawn signs and water are the first two things we want to do on a job site. Water because you need it and lawn sign because we want more jobs. Put it out. I would say the more difficult it is for you to put it out, the more difficult it is for the client to pick it up. So we wouldn't put it right next to their mailbox because they're driving home. They stop right at the mailbox. They get out. They get the mail. They get out. They grab the lawn sign and put it away. If it's at the other end of the, at the, at the, other end of the yard, more likely it's going to stay up there longer, more likely to be seen by more people, more likely to generate more leads. Right. Um, if you got an option on, hey, here's the busy street, here's the cul-de-sac, put it towards the busy side of the street. Mm -hmm. Just simple little things oriented for maximum visibility. Uh, here, we got our soft bristle brush. Um, we got a pump sprayer back there. Normally the pump sprayer should actually be in the five gallon container. I'm going to yeah, I see. Do it. <clears throat> the goal is to have both of these trucks and future trucks to be as identical as possible because then that enables you to do a morning check quicker. We have our A-frame ladder. We could always have oriented that way because there's wheels on this so we can slide it out that way. This thing is a surface cleaner. So it spins around. It's got four tips on it. That allows you to clean concrete, flat surfaces. Literally just pull a trigger and walk right behind it. So it's gonna clean up everything. It's real nice, keeps you fairly clean instead of going wandering back and forth and getting dirt all sprayed back onto you. Um, <clears throat> you basically just hook your ball valve to the end of it and you walk behind it. Real basics with it is I always say it's like an iron. You don't leave an iron in one spot, you cause some issues. Always be moving with it, okay? If you're doing something um, in a commercial storefront or anything, you want to blow your pebbles and stuff yep. off. 
because we've all remember when you take a baseball bat and a golf ball, it makes a really nice noise and it goes really fast. That's what a stone will do. It'll hit that, it'll bust through somebody's you know, storefront window. So if you have that, you hear that ting, 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 like it's hitting something, know which way already that, okay, hey, the window's right here. I want to send it that way. Send it out in the parking lot, okay? Ideally, we blow it all up beforehand. Um, this is our pressure washer um, gas tank. We fill this up every day. At the end of the day, it's nice because you have all three gases right in a row. So vehicle gas, pressure washer fuel, and then just this is your backup. Um, other than commercial, you're most likely not going to need to do this. So unless you use it during the day, you don't need to top this off every day. You should be refilling that and refilling this. Um, <clears throat> we've got our bleach transfer pump. If we had to pump directly out of the tank, which we shouldn't need to, but if we had to, we could use that. You have your cooler on each truck. Um, So we got little icy pops. They're no longer icy. Uh, so normally it doesn't matter. I mean, right now there's still some water and Gatorades in here. You could literally just put them in there, grab some fresh stuff. Um, if you start drinking it, finish it. Real simple basic. Um, these things are called ladder maxes. They go on top of your ladders in order to keep you safe, keep you off the surface. We're not damaging and denting gutters. Um, on this particular truck, we got a 24 foot ladder, which is this one with the green end on it. That was also a 24, and then a 32, which is that blue one. Um, I'll one second, I'm gonna... uh. The water line, mm -hmm. you finish the job, you wanna rinse your hands off real quick. Uh, okay. Yeah. Ideally, I do that outside so I don't make a big wet spot here in the truck, or in the shop. This is how we refill the water at the end of the night. We got a two inch transfer pump, hook it up to this. It fills the water up. Big thing on it is that when you do disconnect it, you have water from here to the top of that. So you disconnect it, step to the side, and it's gonna gush like almost a five gallon bucket worth of water out. It's not fun when you're standing right there and you can get it and it soaks you, mm -hmm. soaks shoes, whatever. Um, all the chemicals should be listed or um, marked up. Hot stain, it's a heavy duty degreaser. We'll go over more over chemicals, but that's there. Red Raider, which we can sometimes use with house washes. It's a lighter duty degreaser. We we'll keep that there. What's inside here? It's gypsum pellets, if you want to look at that. I'll check the clients. It looks like deer poop. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so it's a fertilizer or salt um, neutralizer. Basically, the bleach is going to degrade down to salt and water. Mm -hmm. So that helps to restore the soil. Um, we'll put that down at the bottom on a roof wash and make sure that that way we're, we're protecting the person's property. Um, show that you're making a good faith effort. Okay. Inside here is the plastic tubing. Uh, that's what we'll put on the bottom downspouts to redirect or to collect the runoff. Okay. okay so we can't tell a bleach mixture, hey, kill this, but don't kill mm -hmm. her rose bush. So we'll collect that and then we'll take it somewhere we might put it on a sidewalk, we might put it in the, if it's a stone driveway in the middle of that, we wouldn't put it on asphalt because then you're gonna have soap and bleach and nastiness right in the middle of the driveway, but find somewhere that it's not going to kill something. Okay. Um, we have this, rust remover plus. Cool. This is an acid. So we have bleach, which is a base. We have two degreasers, which are fine to mix with, you wouldn't mix them with rust remover plus, but this is a strong, strong acid. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. It costs basically $250 for this. Mm -hmm. But it will eat rust like it's yeah, for most. Um, your other powdered chemicals are in here. Sodium percarb, we use this for wood cleaning, um, cleaning decks, shakes, docks. Um, not, not always decks, but typically we'll use bleach for that. Um, this stuff is sodium, sodium hydroxide. It's lye, caustic soda. You could use it to unclog drains. You can use it to clean up um, dumpster pads. Heavy duty degreasing. Yep. We can add this. This this is one of the ingredients in the BD200, which is a heavy duty degreaser. We can use some of that with some Red Raider to just give it a little bit of kick. Uh, pretty cool. Yeah. And then we have this 
powder bag that says oxalic acid in it. Acid, acid. Um, don't mix this with bleach, it creates chlorine gas and it'll kill you. Yep. Uh, but we use that as a wood brightener, and if we had to, we can also use it to do a little bit of rust removal. Okay. Um, filling up bleach. Um, Another? Yeah, so we cam lock this on. So when you get back, you fill up your, your bleach, your gas, water. If it's something where. I probably need to change that. Um, if the soap gets below half a tank, we would top it off. Otherwise, the soap at most, maybe once a week, maybe every couple of weeks, it's about to need to refill that. Um, <clears throat> Dang, stop putting it. Oh. 